Hey gang, it's uh, Monday the 4th of May, Cinco de Mayo Eve. Um, just waiting for a few people to get in here. If we get, can figure out how to uh, bring somebody on here, I was told that you could actually add somebody back again. So I was going to bring on Mr. Robert Green, fresh from off the road in one of his wonderful uh, experiences. Uh, it's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. Get everybody to... Robert, I'm going to try to add you right now. We'll see what happens. Well, ain't that special. There was no truth to what I was told about being able to add somebody in or invite them from the very beginning because I wasn't given that option. So anyway, I'm going to share a little bit about Robert's story here in a little bit. Once we get a few more people in here, I can see we got five viewers outside of Robert. So we'll go ahead and kick it off. I'm coming from the sunny shores of... Uh, Another undisclosed location, but at least the sun is setting and we're still free as far as I can tell. Last time I checked it, <clears throat> we still had some freedom left. We did see that my home state, uh, the governor's claiming that by the 12th, 90% of the state of Ohio is going to be opened back up. But I'm out. I'm still in, um, we can type it. What can we type, Robert? Um, I'm going to have to get a little feedback from you on what you're getting at. We can type it. But anyway... Um, oh, Robert, so we can type it. Yeah, I want you guys to, uh, anybody who's tuned in tonight, let's, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the escapades and the BS that's going on as far as, uh, rates and then, uh, what's going on out there in the world. So I want a little bit of feedback kind of from different people out here. And I'm going to kick this off with, uh, Robert Green's story. He and I have been staying in pretty close contact here the last, um, oh, the answers. Gotcha. Yep. Anyway, I'm going to kind of, Share a little bit about Robert's story, and I'd like a little bit of feedback from everybody else, too. Uh, Robert, Robert, for those of you that don't know, he's uh, at least under a carrier out of Oklahoma. He's uh, He pulls reefer and pulling a lot of um, essential loads and stuff from coast to coast. So, you know, hats off to all you guys out here that are still, uh, still out here making it work, even with the uh, unscrupulous brokers out here that are cutting the ever-living daylights out of the rates and everything else, and then have the audacity to say, well, you guys are willing to run it for that. So not not advocating a uh, shutdown or anything like that, but just start saying no to crappy freight. You know, if you're going to lose money, you might as well lose money sitting at home. Yeah, there's Kendall Science. Uh, Alan Wilcher just tuned in. But anyway, uh, let me all, let everybody else, also everybody let me know where you're at tonight, um, what the weather's doing. But anyway, Robert Robert's last escapade was... Uh, Absolutely, kind of a joke. We'll uh, we'll leave out what happened to him the end of last week, when he rescued a load in a uh, grocery warehouse, left him sit for, I think it was two or three days, and uh, finally the company's leased to said go to a drop yard, drop the trailer. They got him set up on another load out of the port. I believe it was a load of melons, to a grocery distribution center, and I will call out that <clears throat> that particular grocery chain that really stuck it to him. It's Kroger. Kroger uh, grocery store. So hats off to Kroger's grocery stores out there, their distribution center in Shelbyville, Indiana. Robert, for those of you that don't know, he had a, um, he, uh, he busted his hump, got a load that uh, he kind of took a few chances on, but he got it there. When they, when they uh, had requested it, he had a, had a, 7.30 a.m. Saturday appointment to unload. He pulled in there at uh, 6.30. Line was out the gate. They uh, they uh, finally called him in at 5.30 in the afternoon. Or no, they, they came out and told him that they were uh, they were going to be closed down. Okay, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll add that in to Robert. But anyway, at 5.30, they said, well, we're closing down for the night. You know, we'll work you guys in tomorrow. Called him at 2.30 on Sunday morning to uh, to go hit the dock. He sat in the dock all day yesterday at 5.30 yesterday afternoon, sitting in the dock at the Kroger Distribution Center in Shelbyville, Indiana. He was still sitting there at 5.30 in the afternoon. They hadn't touched him. When I talked to him this morning, yeah, that's what I said, Kroger. Did, or did I say Meyer? Okay, it was Kroger Distribution Center in um, Shelbyville, Indiana. Um they finally got him unloaded at about 8.30 this morning, and they spent two hours getting to him. 
his paperwork once they finally got him unloaded. And the rest of this story is, he sat there in that dock from 2.30 Sunday morning. They would not allow him to drop his trailer and go next door, let alone walk out the gate to the truck stop next door to go to the bathroom, to get anything to eat. He said, if you leave, we'll have to put you back in, in queue and uh, we'll work you in. So, you know, hats off to that. He also told me he went out to use the bathroom in the port john Great way to treat your drivers that were so essential out here. Well, anyway, bathroom's overflowing. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, Robert, you heard back from the, uh, the uh, county health department on that situation because you had said that they had, uh, you had called and left them a message. Of course, I'm sure they never did. Also, they, they, uh, they gave him a whopping $300 extra on the price of that load for what, what he did and what he endured. So, you know, and, and part of the excuse was, according to what Robert told me, is they left him sit there because they had no warehouse space. But yet it's unbelievable that you walk into a grocery store, fresh produce isn't there. We won't even get started on the meat world because that's the world that I work in. <clears throat> All these supposed slaughter facilities that are shutting down and everything else like that because they're testing, they're testing positive for this virus. Not people who are sick, they're testing positive. So they send everybody home or everybody runs out the door. <clears throat> you know, I, I understand people's health is very important, but be interesting to see when this is all over with, how long the antibodies actually stay in somebody's body, you know, or, or whatever, you know, and they're anxiously, as everybody knows, are anxiously working on getting a, uh, working on getting a vaccine for everybody, but Used to say this virus isn't gonna isn't gonna mutate and won't do any good, just like the flu shots that they send out there. So I said my piece there on Robert's part. I know that oh, they were pulling the, the health department was pulling in as you pulled out. Well, hopefully they shut that distribution center down and fire the managers of that place for the garbage that's going on. Dustin Howard, thanks a lot for your feed feedback on Shelbyville. Distribution center has always sucked. So obviously you've been there as well. Uh, Scott Arthur, thanks for tuning in there from Indianapolis. Glad you're there. Alan Welcher is sitting down in Florida and it sucks, I guess. I don't know. Hello, Amber Salmons from Dallas, Texas. And uh, name here I don't recognize. So thanks a lot for tuning in there. Charles Etheridge. Um, no, I, get, I got more, more people tuned in here, but for whatever reason, I can't see who they are, but thank you guys for tuning in. You know, it's, we're trying to get a little bit of information out there. You know, if anybody else has got a little bit of a story, tell me, tell me something about it and I'll, uh, I'll expound on it if I have to, I don't care. <laughs> but anyway, now I'm back out doing my, my gig, uh, buying cattle on the East coast of the United States. So, uh, Rod, Rod Oakland, there's our first person tuning in from, from, uh, the great country of Canada up in Alberta. That is some beautiful country up there, Rod. Uh, hopefully all is well up there, you know, in the great white north, for lack of better words, eh? But anyway, I'm back out into my uh, my normal routine. Things are kind of getting back to normal. Last week was a gangbuster, super busy day, days last week. Uh, tomorrow was turned out, turned out, uh, it's going to be kind of pretty much the same thing, so... I'm doing out doing my part out here as well as all the other guys running the livestock trucks, trying to get the uh, livestock into the facility so they can get it processed and get it back out to the grocery stores. So guys like Robert and everybody else out there in the world that's uh, pulling reefer, you know, and to get it to get it in back out to the uh, distribution centers and and the grocery stores and everything. Also, something that's kind of probably being overlooked. You know, I always talk about. The front end and the back end guys in the uh, in the facilities that uh, you know make sure we get the meat out there. Um, you know, there's a there's an army of people out there also that feed the middle of the building. As far as getting the cardboard in there for the boxes, um, getting cardboard from the manufacturing facilities to the uh, packing plants, as well as the guys that are making the skids and everything else tankers that are hauling the chemicals and everything else in and out of the plants. I mean, that's just a, just a quick synopsis, you know what I mean? We got everybody else out here doing their part. I know I got a lot of friends that pull dump trailer and hopper bottoms and now uh, they're trying to get the fertilizer out there to all the farmers and to the 
fertilizer distribution plants so the farmers can get in the field, which reminds me, you know, when you're out there on the roads right now, kind of pay attention to the farmers out here. They got one shot at trying to get their crops in. And being as I'm from uh, West Central Ohio, we've been getting a lot of rain. We can't get more than about two days of rain without, uh, once again, once again, uh, Rod Oakland, I see that you're a trucker in the oil field world, and I understand it's very, very slow. It's the same way uh, down in Texas. I've got quite a few friends that work down in the oil fields there with the price of crude oil dropping, and then the, on top of that, the uh, demand is way, way, way off. And you know, a lot of people need to wake up and realize also that <clears throat> diesel fuel is a byproduct of gasoline. If they're not selling gasoline, that stuff's going to all be stockpiled. It's going to be piling up. There's going to be nowhere to go with the diesel fuel, then they'll have to stop making gasoline. So, you know, the, the domino effect, I think, is going to be really long-lasting. Um, Doug Canfield, hello from West Virginia. Thanks for tuning in tonight as well. We try to have a good time. I was, I wanted, to, I keep wanting to bring Tyler on, but Facebook's got their ability to add people all jacked up right now. It adds a lot of, a lot of color and everything else. If I can bring somebody in, so I'm gonna try to get something set up on Zoom so I can actually have somebody call in. You don't have to listen to, to my nonsense and my endless babbling and griping and complaining. I guess is a good way to put it. But also, uh, those of you out there. If you could uh, remember a friend of mine in her in your thoughts and prayers, she lost her husband a year ago. Those of you that um, were from the Springfield, Ohio area, Mark Schumann, who owned uh, Schumann Specialized, he passed away a little over a year ago. Well, his wife was trying to keep all that going, plus they've got a, a small uh, pasture load of cattle. She was out uh, trying to uh, doctor a baby calf and get it tagged so it was ID'd and everything, and uh, Mama Cow got a hold of her. And um, <clears throat> she's uh, in the hospital right now. Ended up having to go in and have emergency surgery. She's got one of those halo type braces around her leg right now. So, you know, keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Not only did she break her leg just below the knee, but it also broke her arm up around the up around her shoulder also. So, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty nasty lick she took. So, you know, hats off to. Hat, they're not really hats off, but thoughts and prayers to the Schumann family. They've been through enough right there, right there, in itself. So, just a personal friend of mine, and just to kind of keep her in your thoughts and prayers, if you would. They need all the help they can get right now, because I can only imagine what kind of shot that would be. I know what it's like getting hemmed up in a trailer, as well as the rest of y'all that have run livestock or do run livestock. Just how uh, dangerous it could be. And I was just out there, saw her herd of cattle, and if it's they didn't have anything that weighs under about 1,400 pounds. So it was a open pasture uh, type of situation. So, you know, always kind of think about that when you know you're buying that nice ribeye or whatever, or somebody wants to complain about the price of meat. Maybe uh, just tell them a little bit about that story of really how dangerous it is out there. And I know there's naysayers out there, and I'm sure the uh, protesters will find this video and say, well, you probably deserved it. I've seen a lot of that kind of stuff. I've been personally uh, verbally attacked by some of those bunch just because I said support America's farmers and the milk milk producers as well. So <clears throat> kind of ridiculous, you know. People put their life effort into something and you've got people that think that they're not even treating their animals ethically or anything like that. Well, let me tell you a little secret. Those of you that kind of tune into this deal, they all, you all realize that People involved in the livestock world probably care about their livestock more than they do themselves. They worry about that, that next calf on the ground or that dairy farmer as, fell as, as well as uh, dairy farmers. You know, they're trying to make sure their calves get on the ground as well as they can continue their milk production. And milk production, some of the dairymen I deal with, they've had to cut their production 15% because the demand isn't there. And uh, you keep hearing these stories about about milk being dumped, well, there isn't necessarily a lot of complete truth in that whole thing. Yes, there is milk being dumped, but uh, <clears throat> those of you that aren't real, real familiar with the whole supply chain on milk, milk is a pretty broad subject. You've got your whole milk that you buy in a grocery store, you've got your 2%, and you got your skim milk. Skim milk is basically a byproduct once they've called up, pulled all the proteins, the fats, 
you know, all the what we call components out of that. That's for your sour cream, your cheese, your butters, and all that kind of stuff. Well, the byproduct of that is skim milk. There's no nutritional value to speak of it in that. So the, milk, the, the majority of the milk that's actually getting dumped is skim milk. And that comes from a dairyman that uh, <clears throat> one of the big producers in the country, they were dumping skim milk, but they're not dumping whole milk. Um, the schools... <laughs> Robert, Robert, those animals get treated better than the government treats us. Boy, that's a lot of truth in that one. Oh, Jeff McClure, glad to see you in there. Dave Coleman just uh, threw a comment in there. Heard dairy is going downhill quick at the moment. Um, it is going downhill, but they're maintaining. A lot of guys are having to sell off extra cows just to cut down production because it's not as simple as just turning a spigot off or a faucet off. I mean, it, you know, cow is, dairy cattle are, are bred specifically to produce high volumes of milk. Some of them produce higher, higher butter fat than others do. But <clears throat> once a cow gets started getting, starts milking for about six to eight months, their, their production levels are real high and then it falls off. Farmers will dry them off, give them a break while they're get, going through the final part of their gestation. So they have another calf and then they get them back in better condition. So they, um, milk production goes back up. So these guys that are having to dry off cattle prematurely to cut down on, cut down on production. It's going to be, once again, ten months before that cow comes back into, into production. So here you are. Once things do take back off, there's going to be a shortage of milk for a while because now the production levels are way off because the cow herds have decreased in size so much. It's a, uh, it's a serious uh, snowball effect that's actually going to be a lot. A lot longer lasting. Uh, E.J. Hussey from Georgia, thanks for tuning in. Max Grove from uh, Pennsylvania, good seeing you tune in here tonight. While I'm mentioning Max Grove, he uh, he's a good friend of mine, I'll put it that way. Today when I pulled into the farm to drop some cattle off, he uh, I looked out across the field, and Max was standing on the back of a flatbed wagon. They were bailing... Um, bailing uh, high moisture rye grass that were bailing it on a horse drawn it was a horse drawn baler pulling the wagon on the side of the hill and those guys were down there bucking bales and I uh, ran into ran into the farmer that he was helping out on his way back to the silo those guys they they bale that stuff in small square bales and they take it into a chopper to blow it up in the silage to or back into the silo for um for silage you know, for feed down the road. So it was, it was kind of neat to see the, the crew out there in the field throwing throwing bales on the side of the hill and everything was horse drawn. So kind of the kind of a nice throwback and what have you like that. So Max, thanks for your hard work and everything you do to help keep me going as well. Carl Freeman, thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, we're kind of discussing some of the situations out there. You know, hats off to all the guys out there struggling, not hats off, but you know, my, my heart and sympathy goes out to you guys that are, that are struggling out there, just trying to keep ends met, met, keep trying to keep the lights lit and then hopefully be able to hang on to your equipment till the, uh, till this thing turns around. James Crowley, Texomatic, tech, was it Texas Media Foundry now, I guess, is what it's called. I need to get you on here sometime. You can talk about what you do and everything, you know, doing your top rate videos if you can give me a type in there, kind of what you're working on. James has done a lot of videos for different guys. He did a, a video. I think he put the video together for Paul Paul Marhoff or some of you know him as Long Haul Paul, the 30 weight coffee video. James Crowley's the one that put that together, and he also uh, threw together Bill Weaver's Bull Holland Bull Holland song. And then another guy that just joined us right now. Hopefully someday we'll be able to get him and his other half on. Uh, Todd Ellis. One of the uh, one of the characters, we'll put it that way, from uh, from Shipping Wars. Those of you that know don't know Todd and Todd and Tamara, they're super super good people. Um, if you want to follow kind of their escapades and what they're doing, you can uh, find them on um, Trucking is Glamorous. I believe uh, she's still got that going. So Scott Horvath from Illinois, glad to glad to see you're tuned in there. Mister Oversized does the pilot car deal, so. 
I just brought that up, Dave. I'll get text on Bull Hall and BS as soon as we get the technology deal set up like what you and I have talked about. Um, it'd be great to have him on and as well as uh, I want to bring Tom Tamer on if we can, if we can, if we get the technology side of this thing done. So, anyway, James, I, I get you there, James or Mr. Crowley, about trying to keep the lights on. It's good to see you're doing real estate videos. I know you've put together uh, quite a few videos for some cattle auctions, some of the high end stuff too. So, got to stay diversified in this world anymore. To, make things work so well, you're, you're quite welcome Max uh, glad to see you got that done I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow have your have your running shoes on <laughs> for lack of better words um, don't know really what what else to touch base on you know I mean I kind of had my rant in the beginning there trying to defend Robert and the rest of you guys that are dealing with the grocery warehouses on the on the shortages and everything but <clears throat> trying to keep our heads above water ourselves. Tyler's been uh, super busy around the barn as well. He uh, He's getting trained on herdsmanship and what have you. As far as herd management, he's out running, pen, running, running pastures two and three times a day right now. We've got a lot of calves dropping out and what have you like that. So it's kind of funny. He and I got into a pretty heated discussion on Saturday night. I think it was Saturday night. Told him there was one particular calf that needed to be checked on. Told him what cow it belonged to, and then, no, I haven't yet, Dave. We'll uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Anyway, got into that heated discussion about what calf belonged to what cow, and he told me I didn't know what I was talking about. The only only thing that I didn't know what I was talking about was the ID on the calf. I had the right cow calf pair. It was kind of funny. He just kind of looked at me and was, "Oh, you crazy fool." You don't know what you're talking about, old man. Well, I ended up being right in about 99% of it. I just missed the tag number. So um, Dave Dave asked me to uh, talk about GATS. For those of you that aren't aware of it, GATS has been canceled this year as well. We were really looking forward to a good show down there. Uh, Dave and I were planning on coming down, but, you know, once again, you know, it's quite a ways out, but, you know, they're trying to let everybody know far enough in advance about GATS not going on as well as vendors and everything else. It wasn't like Matt's where it was kind of a last minute two weeks before uh, everything ended there. So hopefully next year the truck show season will get back into what it's doing. Um, hopefully those of you in the states that are locked down, you guys are keeping your mental sanity about you. You know, uh, if, if you're not, feel free to reach out to Pretty much anybody at Chrome and Steel. I know Robert Green as well. He's been at wit's end, you know. If you're struggling or whatever, reach out to us here at Chrome and Steel. And we might not be able to help you, but at least we'd be a shoulder or, or whatever to lean on you. I mean, that's what we're all out here for. Trying to uh, keep ourselves going, keep our sanity about us. Yeah. Oh, Dave said he heard that G-Bats, the... Guilty by Association truck show down in Joplin is still on. So maybe there will be one truck show. And uh, we might try to, uh, we might do some chrome and steel with, in conjunction with uh, Pure Country Livestock Association. We might try to throw something together, a last minute truck cruise in. We'll kind of see what happens later on this summer maybe up in Ohio, we've got a place we can do it. We might just do a uh, a cruise in type of thing and uh, maybe get some of our favorite wannabe mu musicians involved. I, I say that very sarcastically. They're not wannabes, they're some of the best in the industry as far as country music as well as the trucking industry and everybody knows who they are, but it, those of you that aren't familiar with it, um, Bill Weaver, who's really heavily involved with uh, Chrome and Steel Radio. He's willing to get involved, and I had to uh, talk to Paul Marhofer. Hopefully, we can make that kind of deal happen as well. Those guys, you know, and anybody else, uh, you know, out there in the trucking world, too, that isn't familiar with Tony Justice, he's a friend of... Uh, Tony Justice is a friend of Chrome and Steel Radio as well, and 
good friend of everybody here too. So as, as something like that kind of comes along, it might be kind of short notice. We may only have a week or two notice. So we've got a great place out in the country. We'll just kind of wait and see how things wind down before they spool back up. Robert says what we're going to do is have a fence stretching party. We'll probably do a training seminar. We'll have one post. We'll have two posts up there. We'll probably do two posts in the ground, one piece of wire, and, you know, it'll be a seminar on how to build fences if this thing hasn't been done, isn't over with by late summer or whatever, with this whole uh, virus situation. Kind of a tongue-in-cheek deal there, so try to have some fun. Dave said, let's put it together. I know we can be there. Well, yours truly will be there for sure. Robert will be there. If we got a couple weeks' notice and uh, what have you, so... You know, another thing to kind of keep in mind is all these all these kids that are seniors right now. I know Tyler's hanging in there pretty good. You know, he's working. He's got his mind off everything. But still, you know, there's there's uh, different movements out there to try to help these kids cope with uh, what's going to happen right now. And the other the other thing is too, I never really thought about it. Somebody brought it up to me today. You know, you got seniors in a college right now that they were counting on coming out of college with a really good job and look at the economy. So, you know, I mean, it's one thing for these kids coming out of high school to look at what's going on, but man, these poor kids that are coming out of college hoping that they were going to have a decent job, you know, in a Fortune 500 company or something like that. You know, we'll have to make sure we can, uh, we can uh, support them in any way possible. You know, we're trying to be a positive role model, positive influence just like we should be doing anyway, but um, just just something that we as, as citizens ought to do. I got Tyler involved with a uh, a group. I don't know. It's it's kind of a Ohio Valley group. People put kids in there that were graduating, and other other people joined the joined this group, and they actually adopted them. And they were sending out packages and what have you, kind of sweets and T-shirts and snacks and different things like that as well as if they knew what college somebody was going to they were sending them you know the garb like Tyler was going to be basically a satellite school of Ohio State University so it's kind of kind of neat that people have thought enough ahead to do something like that because you know these kids these seniors this year they were all looking forward to prom and I know a lot of parents dropped a lot of money out there for prom dresses for their daughters and they're not going to have a prom to wear it at, so, you know, there it is. I guess it'll be a wedding dress someday. I don't know. It was there. I didn't mean it. I'm trying to be add some humor to it. Um, Tyler Tyler's looking forward to going to college because he never really got to finish high school the way he wanted to. And, you know, now in the state of Ohio, it's all up in the air on what they're going to do for graduations. They're talking about virtual graduations. Kids won't even get to walk for a deal like that. And then they're talking about this harebrained idea of allowing up to 10 at a time walk across the stage with their with two guests. Come on, wake up. Let's do it in a football field. If not, maybe maybe people in a community ought to put something together, an impromptu, not sanctioned by anybody type of deal. I'm not saying break any rules, but there's no laws against peaceful assemblies, regardless of what people want to say. I don't care if I'd get arrested for something like that. It doesn't matter to me. I've got constitutional rights just like every one of us do too. So, but anyway, enough of the political rant. Um, I'm probably going to bail off here. Hopefully, I can get Dave off of his tail to uh, figure out a way that we can uh, get something set up through Zoom or something like to do a conference deal, so we can at least have uh, to have one guest on, so you don't have to listen to me gripe and complain and make a total fool of myself. Yep, yeah, there you go, Scott. Proms, weddings, vacations, a lot of people lost out on, on special times. You're exactly right. You know, and other people, you know, unfortunately aren't even able to give a proper goodbye to friends and loved ones because of limitations for, uh, for funerals and wakes and stuff like that, too. So, you know, kind of thoughts and prayers for those people as well. I kind of forgot about the weddings and vacations, you know, not to mention people that have lost up to 30% of their retirement you know, that were looking to retire within the next one to two years. I mean, it's, this is a pretty 
pretty far reaching, but you know, the other, the other side of it is too, if you are finding places that are open and it's, you know, not, not fast food, but it's uh, mom and pops or whatever. I've been stumbling across these places out here in the back roads of back roads and byways of uh, areas I'm in. In fact, I stumbled across the smokehouse not far from where I'm staying tonight. Uh, they had smoke, let's see, they had barbecue ribs, pulled pork, brisket, crab cakes, all that kind of good stuff too. And I think I found my new home away from home. You know, and there it is, you're supporting family owned businesses or what have you. So I, I can't ever stress that enough. You know, this country was, was founded and still carried by, uh, by mom and pop and small businesses. And when I say small businesses, it's not the definition of the government's idea of a small business being 500 employees or less. I'm talking about the husband and wife own a company and they got maybe 10 to 15 employees and that's about it. That to me is a small business, maybe up to 20 people. Those are small businesses, not 500 people, not 100 people. You know, that's that to me, that's a small business. So there, I said my piece. I think I got my rants in for tonight. Anyway, I want to, th excuse me, I want to thank uh, Davy Crockett Travel Center for uh, sponsoring us and making a lot of this stuff possible here at Chrome and Steel Radio. Um, also, uh, shout out to one of my favorite places over here in. Pennsylvania, Shippen, Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, exit 29 at the uh, bullpen washout. They do ag washouts, but they'll also do uh, also do uh, reefer washouts if you want to give Sharon a call in there at the bullpen in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Also, you can pick up, we've got a lot of stock of uh, Pure Country Livestock cancer awareness shirts that we're up. Uh, we've got hoodies, shirts, hats, and a, pr a portion of those uh, Sales actually go to uh, pediatric cancer. We've got some autism shirts left like that. So, you know, if you could help support that because charitable stuff is really, really, really taking a big hit like that. You know, just trying to keep um, people to keep ends met, meet, meet. And uh, I know there's an army of people out there also that, that if they've got extra, they're trying to do things for other people. I talked to another guy today that He's a good friend of mine, you know, and charity in my book is charitable things is really important. And um, this guy, he's a, uh, he's a, uh, he's an electrician. His wife is a dental hygienist. And a lot of the dentist offices, you know, when they lock down the country, they, they, uh, they've had to shut down and those people were laid off. This particular individual, I think he bought probably close to 50 or 60 pounds of ground beef and he didn't worry about it for himself or his own freezer. He actually bought it to give to other people so they could keep food on the table for them and their families. So, you know, kudos to all the people out there that are doing what they can to help the the needy out, for lack of better words, and especially the ones that are that never ask for anything, but they're willing to, uh, you know, they, they never ask for anything they got, I don't, I don't want to say too much pride, but just too much pride in themselves. They're not going to ask for any charity. They always figure out a way to make things happen for themselves and fend for themselves. So, you know, we need to make sure we look out for those people as well. You know, not just, not just the ones that are clamoring, holding a cup out, but the ones that are quietly suffering, not just financially, but also uh, mentally. The mental health world is really struggling right now too. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be without any income and I'd be the only only provider for uh, for a household or myself and have to worry about a car payment, house payment, keeping food on the table, especially as far behind as some of these states are on getting um, getting unemployment and everything like that, which speaking of that, hopefully um, hopefully those of you that are eligible, you've got your $1,200 a head for you and your spouse, up to $1,200 a piece uh, stimulus check and $600 per kid, you know, if you're eligible for it. So hopefully you've got that and it's actually uh, making a difference for you. Randy Lincoln, good to see you in here. I know you from Indiana. 
I'm uh, glad to see you're back in decent health, health getting your pacemaker changed. I'd totally forgotten that you were kind of down and out like that. So good to see you're back in health. Uh, be safe out there and, uh, you know, keep your head down and everything else like that. And, you know, good luck getting back into it. Glad to see you're able to uh, get back to work. So also a uh, big shout out to uh, Jack's Chrome Shop. Make sure you take a look at them on um, on the inner tube out there, jackschromeshop.com, I think it is. Take a look at what they've got. Dave Coleman, who, uh, as you know, is heavily involved here at Chrome and Steel Radio. That's kind of his deal. So, you know, support another support another family-owned business there. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure he's always got some kind of some kind of special going on. So that's right, Melissa. You and you, Nick, get to the house. Put your feet up. I know you're stressed out, so you guys be safe uh, out there as well. So, anyway, don't be afraid to reach out to anybody if uh, you're feeling mental distress or anything like that. You know, the last thing we want to do is add more numbers to something. There's always somebody that cares. There's always somebody out there that loves you. Don't be afraid to to reach out. You know, if you need somebody just to talk to. You know, even if it's just somebody to cut up with or whatever, sometimes that's all it takes. You know, all of us out here on the road, we all know what it's like. We have way too much time with our own thoughts. And uh, it's easy to uh, easy to uh, get behind on that. Dave Coleman just said he's got a big sale going on this month at Jack's Chrome Shop. Stacks, grills, rear light bars. And for those of you that are driving the new W W990, He's got parts for those. Make sure you give Dave a call there at Jack's Chrome Shop. Give him a jingle. I know he'll treat you right. You know, tell him you heard him on Chrome and Steel Radio, and you never know. He might throw you another bone or something like that. Uh, Robert Green said he's a phone call away if you need somebody to talk to. Those, those of you that are friends with me know I'm pretty accessible if I'm not sound asleep and I hear my ding go off on my phone. So I think on that note, I'm going to get off of here. i got to get some shut-eye. It's going to be a long day tomorrow getting chased in, around, and out of pens. So y'all take care. God bless, and I'll be safe out there, and we will see you next week.